Alright, um, just so you guys know, I'm like very close to the end of the game here. Um, which is why I used a lot of those. I just maxed out our life just because I could. Um, I am going to need some space selling? in my inventory for something. Um, 10,000, wow, that's a lot. Twenty-five hunts, not a lot. Um, I'm gonna sell some grenades. Is that all, stranger? Is that all? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Just gonna have two of Thank each. You. Should be, should be enough. Um, I don't think I'm even gonna use any grenades here, but I just. Yeah, I could just have one of each, really. I'm just a little bit concerned about um, my space at this point. Don't think it'll be a huge issue, but... Yeah, I'm gonna sell what are you one selling? of each grenade again. Is that all? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Alright. room. How much money do I have? 14,500. Let's see if I can buy any last buying? minute upgrades here. I cannot. Which is fine. I don't. I'm honestly, I, I don't think I'm going to be using the striker at all. Let me see the damage on this. 9.0 and this is 6.5. Yeah. I'm not going to be using the, uh, <laughs> over this, no. Uh, okay. Let's do this. Let's rock, game. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything, no. Uh, wait a second. Save point. Where is the save point? Uh, what? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm not right at the end of the game, I don't think. I, I think, I don't know. The map looks like I'm, oh shit. Ashley, get the fuck away. Wait. Um. Got a lot of handgun ammo. Oh, fucking. Okay, they're just gonna rush me then. That's not fair. Cool guys. Alright. Ashley took no damage. Not really low, but I'm, I don't have as much as I'm used to having. Um, okay, I can open that. Uh, what 
the hell? Where does this take me? Follow me. I'm, ah, shit, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. Alright, let's see what the fuck this is. I hope, hopefully I'm not fucking bypassing like a save point or anything. I honestly don't know where this is. Wait. Oh shit, this is the... Oh fuck. This is the room where Ada fought uh, Sadler. I don't think I've ever... Yeah, I don't think I've ever come in here after... After the fight already ended like this. I guess I always just kind of like bypassed it. Follow me. I want Ashley up here. Go closer to me. Wait. I think those are magnum bullets I see. They are magnum bullets. Well, I'm glad I came here. I'm kind of like half contemplating not using my broken butterfly just because it's like super powerful right now. Like I feel like it might make um, the end of the game like too easy. I mean, this is my first time ever fully upgrading the Broken Butterfly like this. I always had the uh, Killer 7. I think that's the other game. That's the other Magnum, Killer 7. I always had that instead of the Broken Butterfly because I didn't know about the Broken Butterfly's like special upgrade thing. But I guess I'm done here. Fuck. Wait. Don't trust this game. Not to respawn enemies. Follow me. I'm not leaving her behind. Okay. This hunk of junk? I, I don't know about this, Leon. There's only one way to find out. You operate. I... This is just a video game, but Are how does sure she know what do the this? fuck she's doing? Yeah. Alright. Why does Leon Here trust her this much? How are you feeling? Like a million bucks. I thought you were gonna die. All right, guess I'm up. <laughs> that face she made. You okay? I don't know about you, but I think it's time we go home. We're going home. Hit ratio, 69%. I've died 11 times in this whole playthrough. That's pitiful. Okay, so, yeah. The final chapter. Uh, I don't know if there's a save point up ahead, but if there is, and whatever's, whatever's, man. If you thank God it's out. Wait. That's what she. Uh, no items here. There should be items here. There should be items here. Come on.
Wait, which way am I going? Okay, I came from that direction. I'm going... I need to go the direction that I just came from. Behind me. I came from here. Okay. And there really are no items in this room? How How is that possible? There, there have to be items here. Okay, whatever. Follow me. Wait. Follow me. Our mission. What is this nonsense? The real power of the United States... Wait. The real power of the United States lies in three areas. The Justice Department, the administrative bodies, and the military. In order to take control of these areas, we must influence the minds of the people who advise the president. After this is done, the rest of the departments will fall, will quickly fall under our sway. If by chance the United States were to figure out our plan, the damage caused should be minimal. We will still be able to conquer the country as planned using our backup plan. Once we... backup plan. Once we control the country, we will use their international influence to our advantage. The rest of the world will fall swiftly. As already stated, it is, if our first plan doesn't go as smoothly as expected, we'll proceed with our secondary plan. By sending in our special forces, we will infiltrate, infiltrate, infiltrate the country from within. Fear and chaos will spread through the nation like a virus. It'll only be a matter of time before the country loses its stability. At that time, when they're most vulnerable, we will strike. Rejoice, my brother, and the world shall soon be cleansed. Okay, so I guess uh, taking Ashley and getting some kind of insane bribe from the president is the first plan, and if this fails, then they're just going to send dudes over to, Wait. like, infect the American people, is, I guess. That is what I gathered. You know, because my health is maxed, because I have so many other, so much other stuff to heal with, I think I'm just gonna sell these two and then just try to upgrade my uh, my shotgun. Welcome. Because they're like any, I can sell them for ten thousand each, which is a lot. And um, ah. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Like the only the only thing that you need a yellow herb for is to increase your life, and I can't increase my life anymore, and I don't have enough to buy this shit. Why game? Uh, any key treasures I can sell? I could sell some of these. Do I want to, though? Do I? No. Yes. No. Maybe. Screw it. I'm not going to. I don't have to. It's, like I said, I'm probably not going to be using my, um, my shotgun during this fight anyway. Uh. Follow me. Oh, there are Wait. boxes here. Yes! Fucking machine gun ammo. You got an incendiary grenade? Not useful. Cleaning house a little bit before this. Alright, all my guns are fully loaded. Seventy saves. A lot of saves. Twenty hours. Wow. Almost twenty-one hours. Follow me. All right. Something's not right. 
Ashley, you stay here. What? What? Like... I'm glad that Ashley doesn't come with us, but... What doesn't look right about this to Leon? Like, how does Leon know that something is... Ada! Ada you, you lost. Why did you lose? Better try a new trick, as that one's getting old. You okay? Wait, he totally just threw Krauser's knife. <laughs> What's so funny? And yet oh, we still I have a knife you know. in our sheath? The American prevailing is a cliché that only happens in your Hollywood movies. Oh, Mr. Kennedy, you entertain me. To show my appreciation, I will help you awaken from your world of clichés. Hey, Thank you for back. helping me awaken from my world of clichés. You're so nice, Mr. Savage. I honestly don't find this boss, like, very challenging at all, really. Like, I don't expect to die at all. Emergency locking down elevator. I could die, like, possibly, but... It's not gonna happen, dog. Very close. Okay, um... <coughs> this is very similar to the Higante part right here. I can choose to jump on top of him and slash him with my knife, or I can blast the shit out of him with a broken butterfly, and I like this idea better. I just did 50 fucking damage to him. And I need to get the hell out of here. Get away. Right. Oh, what the? F where the fuck did that come from? That did a lot of fucking damage, though. Ow, game. Really? That's all it took just to like bring him down? Die? Oh my god, I almost died there. I like, totally almost died. Nope, I don't. Dude, the fuck? Okay, I can make this. Okay, you know, I'm just being stingy with my uh, my health right now. Uh, what I should be doing here is shooting these eyeballs. Whoa, fuck you. That happened way too fucking fast. Alright, game, I get it. Uh, I could use this again, but instead of doing that, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when Leon does this. It looks kinda cool. Oh, I don't have to mash anything? Oh shit, I almost died. 
could have sucked. Turn fucking green, yes! Okay, yeah, so this area is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit wider. Whoa, what the fuck? It was not cool, game. Can I operate this anymore? Can't. Won't let me. You see, like, I just totally walked right past that. I got hit a little bit, but not really. I mean, considering this is, like, the last... Oh, fuck. The last boss, like, I feel like that should have done way more damage than it did. Fuck. Okay. All right. All right. Calm down. Just chill out now. Okay, that was a final boss type thing to do. All right, I give you credit for that. out, Leon. I thought he was jumping. Oh, shit. Now he's jumping at me. Uh... Oh, fuck. Run. Away. Open your eye, man. Nice. Okay, so I think what I'm supposed to be doing is like shooting its eyes that open up right here. When it opens up, I'm supposed to shoot it. Hopefully I don't fucking die. That was very close. I just barely made that. Whoa, what the f that, that was bullshit. That was bullshit. Could heal, but I don't think I have to really. Okay. Come on. How many more of your eyes do I need to fucking blow up now? Okay, there's one on this leg over here. I think I got it. Turn around. Oh, 
Shit. How the fuck am I supposed to shoot it, like, from behind like that? See it? I think I hit it. Oh, it's eyes open here. Fuck you. Yes! Use this! Okay, now I think I'm very close to being done with this. I think it's over here. Fuck. Yes. Almost done. You do it, Leon! I don't have to use this. This is why I was all worried about my inventory space before. I don't have to use this at all. In fact, um, this would basically kill the boss like in one hit, I think. If, um, like, assuming I don't miss, obviously, but, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> um, this actually sells for, let's see how much damage it does. It doesn't even, fucking say um this actually sells for a lot of money in new game plus and i don't think i'm gonna ever play new game plus but i want to be a man and fucking take him out with my guns oh fucking shit okay i'm gonna heal <laughs> i'm gonna heal before this happens Totally fucking killed it. Awesome. Didn't even have to use that uh, RPG. This is the Plaga sample. Ah. Sorry, Leon. Hand it over. Ada, you do know what this is. Hmm. Okay, so don't worry. I'll take good care of it. Ada! Gotta go. If I were you, I'd get off this island too. She really pushed it. Here, catch. Better get a move on. See you around. You whore. Very cute. Okay, so now this fucking game is turning into Super Metroid. Oh fuck. Hundred thousand, yes, I will take that. And I wanna win with my fucking red nine out. It's awesome. So, um I don't really get I mean I know I'm just being nitpicky again, but she just jumped off of a cliff with, like, the Plaga sample in one hand and a handgun in the other, and she somehow managed to get onto a helicopter. Leon. We have to get off this island now. It's gonna blow any minute. <laughs> it's gonna what? She must have, like, dove into the helicopter. What the hell? New area. I have full life right now. Cool. Seriously, Ashley, you should just, like, shimmy down that ladder. Don't even jump from that high. Like, she should be dead right now. That was a little ridiculous game. Jet ski key. Hang on, sweetheart. Hang on, sweetheart. Okay, forward on the left stick makes you go faster don't want to crash into shit or else you will die. 
which is not good. Go off the jump. Ooh. And then all this shit happens, and then that causes that giant fucking wave of death. This is just telling you this is how you go faster. Shit, I feel like I should have died right there. gets attacked by like the lake monster. The lake monster's brother just comes out. Of Come on. Let's Max go speed. Sounds like a great idea. Mission accomplished. Right, Leon? Not quite. I still have to get you home safe. This part is hilarious. So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, um, overtime? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somehow I knew you'd say that, but it doesn't hurt to ask, you know? Her eyelashes so, are so big! Oh my god. Anyway? Why do you ask? Come on, tell me. Huge. She's like a part of me I can't let go. Let's leave it at that. She was talking about Ada just now. Part of him he just can't let go. Ha <laughs> ha. Innuendo. Okay, so that was Resident Evil 4's. Good game, very good game. Um, I think... I'm, I'm totally not prepared to talk about this game. I think... Coder? They refer to them as coders? That's kind of... Okay. Uh, let me turn down the volume on this shit. I don't really care about this weird little music. Um... I think I would say that Resident Evil 4 is probably my favorite Resident Evil game. Um, very, very close to Resident Evil 2. I love that game. No, I think probably 4. It's just the camera fucking angle. Like, I, I hate that fucking fixed camera, like, tank control crap. I can't stand that. That's... Like, I, I know that that's what Resident Evil 2 has, but I was able to, like, put up with it. Because the game was just so good. Like, I don't know. I, I just didn't feel that way about Resident Evil 1, and I've never played Resident Evil 3. Resident Evil 5 was... It was good. I like that it had co-op. I mean, co-op is always fun, but, I mean... It wasn't as scary or as, like, tense, you know? It was... Like... Resident Evil 4, I guess, was probably, like, less scary than, like, the older Resident Evils. That's what I've heard. But, um... Like, Resident Evil 5 just took place mostly outdoors, you know, it's, like, kind of bright. Like, the sun was out a lot of times, it was... It just was... I, I didn't find it as scary. I don't know why, really, but I just didn't. It was, it was a good game, though. But yeah, I just, I like Resident Evil 4 more. I've definitely played this game the most. Um, I do like Mercenaries too. Mercenaries is always fun. Okay, why did I, what the hell, mo oh, this is motion capture. Um, why did I play this game? Why did I start playing this game? I started playing this game I think because um, I wanted to examine the upgrade system for this game. The reason I played Mega Man Legends was that I wanted to examine all of these special weapons and just to see how, uh, how they all worked and which one was more effective than which and which one sucked and all that. But this game, it was mostly to examine the upgrade system and um, for the most part, I would say it's pretty balanced. I mean, like, you know, they were, it, it was balanced. Like, you couldn't really, like, 
like if you wanted to you couldn't like upgrade the handgun fully like right off the bat and like you know have like a fully upgraded handgun by like the first boss or anything like that um I liked that you couldn't have all of your weapons upgraded by the time you got to the final boss. I liked that a lot. Um, I mean, as a designer, I liked that concept a lot. Like, I, I was kind of like disappointed as a player that I couldn't, you know, upgrade everything because I really wanted to show you guys like all of like what basically the special upgrade is for the. Um, the striker, the last shotgun, which is, it increases the capacity from like 25 or like 28 or 30 or whatever it is to like 100. And that's completely insane, but it's awesome. And I didn't get to show you guys that. The um, special upgrade for the sniper rifle. Hang on. And again, is that you? Finally, the line's jack free. Hey, Hunnigan, no glasses. Forget the glasses. What's the status of the mission? I've rescued the subject. We're returning home. You did it, Leon. Thanks. Did it, Leon. You know, you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. May I remind you that you're still on duty? Story of my life. Hang on a second. So he's still, like, returning home with Ashley, meaning that Ashley is with him at this point. And he just heard, like, she, Ashley totally just heard Leon flirting with Hunnigan on the radio. And Ashley totally made a pass at Leon, and he rejected her. That's kind of cold, Leon. Like, dude, come on. Not in front of Ashley like that. She totally wanted you. Uh, let's see. 74% hit ratio. I feel like that's pretty good. That's, that seems like a high number to me. I'm proud of that number. Enemies killed, 1,035. Oh my god, that's a lot. Number of times killed, 11. 21 hours and 6 minutes. Wow. It's a long time. Upload. Okay. To the leaderboards. Ah, man. I'm going to be placed like super low. Now you can buy an infinite launcher and a Matilda from the merchant. That's all I can buy? The infinite launcher is essentially just... It's like a normal RPG, which has infinite ammo. The Matilda, I think it's like a three-round burst fire handgun. Which, I, I'm pretty sure it's not better than the Red 9. So, I'm, this is what I always do in video games. Um, this save is just before the final boss, so I'm going to go down one, and this is going to be my clear data save. <coughs> so if I want to fight the final boss again, then I can just load the first one. I doubt I ever will, but it's there. Why not? Extra stuff. Okay, so this is just New Game Plus. I could watch the credits again. I don't want to. Separate ways. What is separate ways again? I don't know what this is. Maybe this is what I played before, but isn't Assignment Ada also? You play as Ada and... Yeah, it was separate ways that I played before. And Assignment Ada is like some kind of weird... Like, it's different. It's That's not what I played before, but Mercenaries is awesome. I might play it if I could play as somebody other than freaking Leon. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to play that. I just freaking beat this game. Now it is time to do my end game. Uh, conversation with myself. Okay, let me just exit this. Come on, PlayStation. Okay. Okay. So, why did I play Resident Evil 4? Um, 
Officially, I don't really remember the reason that I started recording this game, but, like, as I started recording it a long, long time ago, and then I stopped recording it, and then I was recording, like, I think I recorded uh, Super Metroid after that, and then I did, uh, I know I did Mega Man Legends after that, and then I came back to Resident Evil 4, like, way later. So I don't really remember my initial reason for starting to record this game, but, um why I played it through to the end was because I wanted to examine the how the upgrade system was balanced with the gameplay with the game difficulty um, for Resident Evil 4 I, I thought that it was pretty balanced like like you like they as you progressed further into the game like you can like they slowly like unlocked upgrades for your weapons for you to purchase. They didn't give you any upgrades like free. They just basically said, okay, now you can purchase this next upgrade for your shotgun firepower. And it was... I, what I liked about it was that it seemed like um, like they didn't throw you like a new wave of upgrades for every weapon all at the same time. They like kind of... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They like broke it off into like pieces. So like at this new merchant you can upgrade your firepower for your handgun and your shotgun and your rifle but at the next merchant you can upgrade your um, machine gun and you can upgrade your handgun again or something like that or you can upgrade your magnum at this one too or like it wasn't all like you get to a new merchant and then you can upgrade everything one time for every weapon like that would have been um, easier to design I mean it doesn't really take any effort to design something like that really but um, th they did that just to balance out the game. So like, you're you're getting all this money as you're going through the game, and like it, rather than throwing like a ton of upgrades at, at you all at once, they kind of gave you just enough money. So that if you found everything, you were able to like. If you found everything, you were able to like up. You were able to like purchase all the upgrades that you wanted to get. Um, if you just kind of ran through it, you missed a lot of money. You weren't you weren't able to like upgrade all of your weapons as much. Or if you wanted like like there was at one point where I was fighting Verdugo, for instance, and um, I had to go and buy an RPG because I I sucked. <laughs> and um, yeah, I went and bought the RPG, and that that brought me down thirty thousand pitas. So that's like one good upgrade I could have bought that I bought that I spent. You know, I spent that money on something else. And I pretty much that RPG, aside from like uh, your inventory space upgrades and the the uh, tactical vest which reduced damage, those things I would say are kind of like big necessary purchases. And um, the the treasure maps too, they're very small but necessary purchases. But I didn't spend any money on stuff like um, like I only bought a first aid spray from the store like one time and I don't really know what else you could have bought besides um, weapons yeah I don't really know what else. I don't think you could buy bullets in Resident Evil 4 pretty sure you can't I don't know I, I didn't really pay attention to that but yeah I never really had to buy bullets come to think of it I always had like just enough and that may have been just because I was very cautious with my ammo like for the entire walkthrough like, most people playing this game, especially for the first time, I think would want to, like, keep their distance, like, from enemies as much as possible. So they would, you know, rather than utilize, like, melee attacks, it's like your knife, especially, considering it's kind of weak, they would just rely on ammo and bullets and guns, which would mean that they're using a lot, they would use a lot more ammo than I did, for instance. And I was extremely conservative with my ammo and... I've never really had a problem with it. At some point during this walkthrough, I made a comment like, um, I said something like, I think in the earlier Resident Evil games, like, ammo conservation is like a much bigger thing. Like, it seems like I always just have ammo, like ammo, like I never really have to worry about running out of ammo. And that may have been just because I was extremely conservative with my ammo throughout like the whole Resident Evil 4 walkthrough. Um, and come to think of it, I, I have played Resident Evil 2 in that way. Like, 
I've played Resident Evil 2 where, like, I kill only what I have to kill and, like, I run past everything else or I try to run past everything else and I don't th think I really felt like I was running out of ammo at any point. Well, I may have. Mm, that's hard to say. It's been a long time since I played it, but I don't really remember, like being stuck in a position where like I only had like five bullets for my handgun or something I'm screwed I actually did wind up in that position when I was playing Resident Evil 1 it was horrible Base, I, I completely screwed up my save file too like um, I went into this one hallway and there was like two of those gamma things I think they're gamma hunters or whatever they are the things that fucking jump really high and they just like jump at you and there's like no way to fucking dodge it like, I ran into a hallway, and there was two of them there, and I didn't have anything to heal with, and I was, like, gonna die in, like, one hit, and, like, I had, like, like, maybe, like, three or four bullets in my handgun, and I didn't have anything in my shotgun, and I went into a side room before I got killed, and I saved my game over my old, my uh, previous save. So, basically, I had saved the game where I was stuck in a room, like, as soon as I go out, like, I'm gonna get jumped by, like, these two hunters or whatever, and I'm gonna die in one hit, and I've got, like, four bullets left, and it, it was, it was terrible. That's really, come to think of it, that's probably why I never finished Resident Evil 1, because of that. Like, that whole thing just sucked. Um, but anyway, I'm, like, totally going on a tangent here. Anyway, getting back to the the uh, the weapon upgrades, how it's similar to Arachnoid's upgrade system is that uh, I made a list of all the things that I wanted to be able to up that I wanted you to be able to upgrade in Arachnoid, like all all your special weapons in Arachnoid. Um, damage was one of them. Um, like I designed ten special weapons. And not every special weapon had, like, every upgrade available. Like, and in, in if you've played Dead Space, like, you can't upgrade, um... Like, some weapons have, like, uh... Like, a width upgrade. Like, the, the line gun, like... If you upgrade... The, if you if you purchase the quote-unquote width upgrade, then it, it makes your projectiles, like, wider. So you, like... You're, you're, you damage, like, a wider area. And obviously, for like a machine gun, that doesn't really make sense because I mean it's not gonna like widen your bullets. But there were like special, um, special upgrades like that I had for like a couple of the special weapons. But for the most part, you were able to upgrade your, um, your the bullet damage, the bullets. No, not the bullet speed. The the fire rate, damage, fire rate. Um, I wanted to implement a system where like, just to like. Because you're you have all of your weapons on you at all times, and um, because there's no like ammo in the game, like there's just like an, an energy that replenishes itself automatically. Um, rather than having some kind of like a reload system, I designed a system where like because like, you're not you're not ever going to be reloading your weapon because that happens automatically, and there's so there's no animation for that, so that's not going to delay you at all. So what I wanted to do was, you know, because you have 10 special weapons on you at all times and you're able to utilize all of them, like on the fly, like you just press a button and it brings you to a menu and you can switch your weapons or you can just um, press a button on the D-pad that you have that special weapon mapped to. Um, because of that, like I wanted to kind of um, hinder the player in a sense, like Instead of like um, a reload speed, I had something called like a, a change speed or like a swap speed. So like, um, say you have your like your standard um, machine gun out, and that has a swap speed of one second, and you want to change to like a laser rifle type weapon, and that has a swap speed of two seconds. So it would take you one second to put away your machine gun, and it would take you two seconds to then bring out your laser rifle. So it would take a total of three seconds to um, basically go from having a machine gun out to having a laser rifle out ready to go. Um, that Those are just like 
numbers I just pulled out of thin air, by the way. Three, three seconds is kind of like a really long time to not be able to fire your special weapon. I probably wouldn't implement, like, such a harsh, like, penalty like that. But anyway, that was the system that I had in place because we had... Um, a self-regenerating energy source for these for the weapons that replaced the ammo effectively and that's what we had so there was um there was that there was the upgrades for the weapons were like damage fire rate swap speed um <clears throat> this is we weren't really sure like we wanted to like mess around with this um Like, okay, for like a 2D platformer, it, it makes sense. Like, it would look weird. <clears throat> okay, in some 2D platformers, in some 2D shooter platformers, like, the projectiles disappear, like, halfway across the screen. Like, they don't make it all the way across the screen. That's like a, a range, um, a range, um, like a bullet range, a physical bullet range uh, mechanic like for instance if you were to fire like a shotgun type weapon would those projectiles move all the way across the screen or because it's a shotgun and it's you know shotguns typically they're supposed to have like um, like a short range like a high um, like area short range kind of thing like I wasn't really sure if I wanted to implement uh, a range type system also like to balance out some weapons like um, like the machine gun for instance like that if we were to implement a range system on that like the machine gun those projectiles would go like maybe halfway across the screen or something like that they wouldn't go all the way across so you couldn't like just like kinda sit on like the edge of the screen and just kinda like snipe things out from like way far away um, if we were to have like a shotgun type weapon that would definitely not go all the way across the screen or like it also makes sense for like a flamethrower weapon not to go all the way across the screen. So there's a, a range system for that. Um, you know, the more the more I'm talking about it out loud, the more I like that idea. So yeah, um, when I pick up Arachnoid again and I start working on that game again, I think I want to implement a range system for the for all the different weapons and the different special weapons will have different physical ranges. Um, I think something for something like a rifle. Like a high damage, low fire rate weapon like a rifle, I think that those projectiles should probably go all the way across the screen. Actually, incidentally, I did uh, I did design a weapon. I forgot what what I called it. Something so, the something rifle. I don't know what it was, but basically, like the the mechanic I wanted to implement was that um, the farther you are away from like your target the more damage it does like if you if you hit an, if you hit an enemy like at close range with a rifle it'll do less damage if you hit it as far away it'll do like much greater damage so um yeah <laughs> so that like just totally ended my thought oh right 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 what what can we upgrade for the weapons it was damage fire rate um i think i would like to implement some kind of a um a range system so that would be another thing that could be upgraded for each special weapon special weapon swap speed um, and I think that was it I would have to look at my notes but I'm pretty sure that's that's it and like Resident Evil 4 I really wanted to implement some kind of a like a special upgrade like once you've purchased all the upgrades for the weapon there's one final upgrade that like drastically like improves the weapon in some way, like, the way Resident Evil 4 han handled it was that it just increased some numerical value of the weapon. Like, the Broken Butterfly's damage went from 28 to 50, which is a huge increase, which is which is fine, really. But what I really wanted to do was implement a system where this special upgrade that you purchase for um, each special weapon, it would change the behavior in some way. So, like... Um, like that rifle I was talking about, that sniper rifle type special weapon. Um, my uh, special upgrade for that weapon was that um, the projectiles pierce enemies, and that's that's pretty awesome. That like that would drastically increase. 
in certain situations, obviously, when there are more enemies like kind of lined up, that would you know that would be much more useful in that situation. You know, the the sniper rifle goes from being a great a good weapon to an awesome weapon. Um, for something like an explosive type weapon, you know, the blast radius could increase like dramatically or something like that. Um, I had like a homing missile type weapon designed where um, it shoots, it fires two missiles at once or something like that. But I really wanted to um, to change the behavior of the weapon in a way so that each special weapon has like it's I don't want to say a weakness but it's got strengths like in certain situations I wanted to I wanted to make it so that certain special weapons were much better in certain situations like um, like uh, area of effect type special weapons like those like we, we had one special weapon that like um, did explosive damage it was like a big rocket a big missile launcher the heavy missile launcher is what we called it and um, when that explodes on an enemy like um, like this the special upgrade for that was that its blast radius increases but the normal missile launcher uh, the special upgrade for that was that um, the energy usage like is reduced by like half so basically like um, before, if you could fire like six normal missiles to deplete, like, and that depleted your entire uh, energy bar, energy bar, <laughs> your entire special weapon energy bar, um, because the weapon, the energy usage is reduced by half, now you can fire 12 missiles and then the whole bar is depleted. So that, I mean, like, I think if we just messed around with like, Values like fire speed and damage and uh, fire spread for like something like the um, the machine gun. I think I think we could make though I, I would like the weapons to be more or less like very balanced, like like uh, like I would never want like one weapon to just completely like overshadow like all other weapons like you find one weapon like one special weapon later in the game and like once you have that weapon that like totally like re like renders your machine gun and your rifle and all of your other weapons like obsolete and you don't ever have to use those ever again because you have this one amazing weapon I would really want to avoid something like that and um, after playing Mega Man Legends I that that special weapon that I just described to you was uh what was it? The, I think it was the active buster and the shining laser. Those two weapons they were both extremely good. But basically if you have either of those two weapons like you're insane for using like any other weapon. Like you would never want to use like the stupid grenade arm or the powered buster even once you have like the spread buster. Or the, I mean, not, not the spread, the active buster. Or the shining laser. Like, the shining laser was just insanely overpowered. But, yeah. So, yeah, I would really totally want to avoid something like that. Um, come to think of it, it's been a long time since I've played Dead Space or Dead Space 2, but Dead Space actually really did a good job of balancing weapons out, like giving each weapon like its own unique effectiveness like I never really felt like um, once I got the pulse rifle like I never needed to use the plasma cutter again even though they were very similar I never really they, they were just both good in like different situations somehow the plasma cutter was better for just like dealing damage and I'm totally like talking about I'm talking about Dead Space right now, and I just played Resident Evil Four, but this is kind of relevant. Um, the plasma cutter was good for dismembering uh, limbs, and the pulse rifle was great just for dealing out damage. Um, yeah. Anyway, I should get back to Resident Evil Four. Uh, what What else do I have to say about Resident Evil Four? I think I covered enough. I basically have been talking for like 20 minutes on why I played the game. I guess I should, I should talk about why I like the game. 
Why do I like Resident Evil 4 so much? Let me think about that for a second. What makes Resident Evil 4 such a great game that everybody loves? Um, I guess it was the first Resident Evil... Well, Resident Evil was already like extremely popular when Resident Evil 4 came out. Like... I didn't know too many people who like had really bad things to say about Resident Evil as, as a franchise. Like cuz Resident Evil 1 was extremely popular. Resident Evil 2 was arguably more popular. Um uh, Resident Evil 3, like I never played it, but I've never met a person who has played it who hated it. Like I've only heard good things about Resident Evil 3. So by the time Resident Evil 4 came around, everybody's expectations were super high and Honestly, like I remember that game getting like outrageously good reviews, and everybody was in love with the game, and it, it was a great game. Like I, I had fun playing it just now for what, like twenty hours or whatever it was. Um. So yeah, everybody's expectations were very high. It did, it did something very different, and that was it changed the camera system. It was, it it went from being a top-down fixed camera tank style controls survival horror game it kind of toned down the survival horror element a little bit and it kind of brought some more action elements in like uh, quick time events for instance and um, you know like the environments were like bigger like wider like you weren't like in Resident Evil 2 like most of it took place like in very confined areas like you were in a room or something or in a hallway or on a stairwell or something in Resident Evil 4, like, there was a lot of open areas, especially, like, in the village area. A lot of open farm area and stuff like that. The castle area was a little bit more confined, a little bit more, but still, you know, not nearly as much as Resident Evil 1 and 2. The island area was mm, pretty open. It was pretty open. It wasn't really confined. But, um, yeah, the, the whole camera, the whole going with the over-the-shoulder third-person camera, I think that... <laughs> I think a lot of people liked that. It was a huge difference for the franchise. It was, Capcom was probably very worried about... At one point, I imagine somebody was very worried about drastically changing the way the game is played like that um, and kind of going with like a more conventional uh, camera system. But in the end, it worked out really well. And, you know, I think, like, I think the people who don't like it, I think they tend to be, like, really, like, old school, like, diehard fans of, like, the original, like, three games, you know, on, like, PlayStation 1, which is cool. But I, I really, I hate tank controls and I hate fixed cameras. Like, when I was playing Resident Evil 1 and 2 for the first time, I hated, I hated hearing some enemy coming towards me and like it's it's on like I'm in a hallway just picture this you're in a you're in a narrow hallway but the camera is like pointing down and you can only see like half the hallway and you can hear something at the other end of the hallway and it's walking towards you and the character can see it like if if the if you could see like the character's line of sight you would be able to see the other end of the hallway but because it's a fixed camera and like it's such a weird angle like it doesn't show you what you should be able to what the character is seeing you can't you don't see that zombie walking towards you until it's like halfway down the hallway and I understand that that was like you know that added to the whole like survival horror scary element of the game that made it very uh, suspenseful tense tense is probably a better word but really like it, it is like just the thought of not being able to see what your character what's right in front of your character's face that's kind of a stupid thought i think but you know it it was very um it was very good at creating tension i'll give it that and that's probably what a lot of people like but yeah i i really loved this over the shoulder camera i loved being able to quick turn i loved um I don't know. It just it just felt good. It felt very good. Um, the quick time events. Mm. I'm not a huge fan of quick time events, to be honest. Like, I don't know. It's just 
Like, I don't hate them, but... I don't know. I, I don't hate them, but I don't really like them, either. Like, okay, I have to talk about Dead Space again. Um, Dead, did Dead Space 1 have any quick time events? I don't know if Dead Space 1 had any quick time events. I don't think it did. But Dead Space 1 did have some, like, little... Dead Space 2 had a couple of quick time events. I know that. But, you know, like, I... Like, what are they supposed to do for a game? What are they supposed to do? They're supposed to, I guess, increase the level of interactivity to make you feel like you're actually playing. Like, you have to, like you have to be on your freaking toes, like, all the time, like, during all the cutscenes. Or else you could die. Um, you know, come to think of it, I really did like the quick time events during the Krauser knife fight. That was really cool. Um, I didn't like that if you miss any of them, you die. Like, I died once during that knife fight, but really, if you miss any of those quick time events, you'll just die in one hit. And I thought that was kind of lame. But... Yeah, I mean, like... I just hate the idea of... Like, successfully completing a bunch of quick time events, and then getting, like, to, like, the last, the second to last quick time event, and then you mess up somehow, and then you have to do it all over again. Like, eh. I don't know, I'm just, I don't really like that idea. You know, I guess it was just that the knife fight was so cool <laughs> that I just overlooked the quick time event element of it. Eh, I don't know. But yeah, the, the quick time events definitely added to the um, action of this game. It definitely made the game a little bit less scary, in a way. Mm. Hmm. What else did I really like about this game? I really liked that there were portions of this game where gameplay just like changed a lot like really like all of a sudden like you're playing a different type of game like when um when Ashley was like tied to the wall and like you, like you were on the floor above and she was on the floor below and she was like shackled to the wall and you had to like break like her her locks open and then she was like kind of like cowering in fear on the bottom floor as she was like getting as, like, these cult guys were, like, coming at her and, like, trying to carry her away. Like, yeah, it was kind of stupid that Ashley just stood there and, like, just kind of crouched into a ball and, like, she was a total bitch. But it was cool because you had to just stand up there and, like, totally just, like, protect her with your sniper rifle. That was, that was, that was different. You know, it was a change of pace. It was, it was refreshing. And again, that part where, um, uh, you're in this one big room in the castle and um, you have to like hoist Ashley up onto this one platform and she's got to like run across the, the map and like turn some crank a bunch of times to like um, like raise this platform so you can get to the next room and as that's happening like cult guys are like coming at her and you can't get to her all you can do is like protect her with your sniper rifle while there's cult guys coming at you so you have to fight them off at the same time like that was that was really cool um, more games need to do that more games, and it's, I think it's, um, like, changing up gameplay, like, that much, like, so often during a game, I think it's very underrated, like, Dead Space, I'm talking about Dead Space again, <laughs> Dead Space kind of does that, um, there were those zero, zero gravity rooms, those were always fun, um, uh, the airlocks were pretty cool, uh, but yeah, I, I really like that about Resident Evil 4 a lot. Um, trying to remember if... Like, that didn't really happen in Resident Evil 2. Uh, I don't think Resident Evil 5 did it as much. Like, I, I like just because this is um, Resident Evil, this is kind of like get from point A to point B and do some objective to get to point B. Like, that was kind of like the formula throughout the game. But I guess the objective, like how to get from point A to point B, changed like so much, and they, like they were, 
all the rooms that you had to go through like varied so much like there was one room where all of a sudden you were in like there was like lava all over the floor and there were these big fucking statues that shot fire at you like that came out of nowhere that was pretty cool pretty cool like I sound like a little kid but I mean it was it was unique it was different it was it was a change of pace it was it was awesome um so yeah like <clears throat> I really shouldn't be talking about first-person shooters right now because I've played, like... I mean, it's a different genre, obviously, but... Like, the campaign, like, in a lot of first-person shooters, like... There's usually a part where, like, you have to make some... Ah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not even going to make that point. I'm just going to leave that point out. This is That's a totally different thing. But anyway, my point is that changing up gameplay during... Just changing up gameplay often as long as it's not boring, is a good thing. As long as it makes sense and it's not boring, it's a good thing. Um, I guess in that sense, it kind of like... In, in a sense, like, modularized the game. Like... Like, the whole point of the game was to, like, escape the whole, like, island and, like, save Ashley and get rid of these parasites and then like escape everything but I found myself like not really ever thinking about that like like my first time playing this game I wasn't really thinking about getting off the island or escaping anything I was just kind of focused on getting to my next objective and like looking around a room and seeing all these enemies and like how the hell am I going to get through all these enemies like what what's a good point where I can like lead them to like kind of funnel them and stuff like how do I go about tackling this next area that I've just walked into that's what I've that's what I was thinking about most of the time so I guess like after I like after I completed an area then I was immediately like presented with another area and I had to get over that challenge and it was just like a series of challenges I guess it was <clears throat> um I didn't really feel that as much when I played Resident Evil 2. Because the gameplay was very... It was basically the same all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, basically Resident Evil 2 was just... I mean, there were, like, objectives, objectives that you had to get to. And, the, you know, the I like the puzzles in Resident Evil 2 a lot more, though. The puzzles were a little bit more interesting, I felt. It's been a long time since I played Resident Evil 2, so maybe, you know, I don't remember it so clearly, but the puzzles in Resident Evil 4, those could have used work. Like, huge amounts of work. Like, I didn't have to think for any of the puzzles at all. Um, except for the fucking sliding puzzle. Fuck that puzzle. That's, that, that's another thing. Like, puzzles like that, like like generic puzzles like that like if all of a sudden like there was a sudoku puzzle and like resident evil 4 like that doesn't really belong in there like they should like that whole sliding puzzle they should have made they should they shouldn't have had that in the resident evil 4 game like that's that's already a game that's already its own thing like it's kind of like if you had to like complete like a crossword puzzle in resident evil 4 or if like you had to like I don't know. It's it was just kind of weird, you know. Or like you had to play a game of tic tac toe against someone or something. I don't fucking know. But yeah, um, actually, I did mention Sudoku in a game, and I'm not gonna tell you what game I'm talking about here. But I there is a game that I have played at some point in my life that did include a, a puzzle in it that was just straight Sudoku, like. It does. It didn't relate to the game or the story at all. It was just fucking. This here's a Sudoku puzzle. Solve it, and then the game goes on. Like that was. I I like that game a lot. I'll say that much. But that one puzzle just kind of felt like it was just thrown in there. Like they didn't really try to make it. They didn't really like the whole sliding puzzle. They didn't Resident Evil that sliding puzzle. They just had a sliding puzzle that you're doing like. That's all it was. It was just a fucking sliding puzzle. Come to think of it, they had a sliding puzzle in fucking survival kids too. Ugh. 
crap. I hate surviving. Or I hate fucking sliding puzzles. Anyway. Um, I spent some time talking about what I like about Resident Evil 4. I think what a lot of people like about it. Um, it was a very long game. It was very long, but it didn't feel like it was too long. Like, towards the end, yeah, I was just kind of like, kind of feeling like I just want to like kind of just finish this, this playthrough already and just be done with it, but, I mean, really, that's just because I played it. I've, I've beaten Resident Evil 4 like like at least five or six times like on the GameCube and then on the Wii and then now on here like I've played it a lot and I know everything so like nothing is really like there were very little few things that surprised me in this playthrough but I mean like I don't know like I had, I had fun but I mean it wasn't like it was my first time playing this game you know like like I, I just recorded Resident Evil 4 like three hours today and then I took a nap and then I came back to Resident Evil 4 like just fucking I was just going to finish this game like I just needed my, my goal was to finish the game my goal wasn't really just to sit and have fun and play it was I sat down and I was like I'm gonna fucking finish this thing you know like I guess I kind of looked at it more of like a chore than you know just having fun with the game which is kind of sad but I have been recording Resident Evil 4 for way too long, and it's, I, I need to finish this thing. Um, so yeah, like it's it's very long, but it, it really doesn't feel like it's too long. I felt like it was kind of long towards the end because I played it so many times, and I'm like recording all this, and I got to commentate through it, and I've this is kind of like work for me, but. I know this. I I played this game many times, and it's a good game. And I, I the first time I played it, I didn't really feel like it was too long. I liked the length of it. It's a good game. If you if you haven't played this, and you're just <laughs> if you're somehow watching this video and you didn't watch any of the other any of the other parts of the walkthrough, then I would definitely recommend. You know, just to, to anybody who hasn't played this game, I would totally recommend that you play Resident Evil Four. Very good game. Um. Okay, so I've talked about what I like about it enough. That's, that's enough of that. What didn't I like about Resident Evil 4? What did I hate about this game? What did I hate about Resident Evil 4? This is going to be tough. I'm really, I've really got to put a lot of thought into this. What did I hate about Resident Evil 4? There were a lot of moments where, like, just... There were a lot of shitty, like the again going back to quick time events, like during that one fight when I was fighting uh, Salazar, Salazar, I think it was Salazar, yeah. When he turned into that big fucking tentacle thing and he had a big, like the main like middle tentacle had like teeth and it tried to eat you and shit. The first time I died on that boss, like that has happened to me before. I think it, I think when I was playing playing it on GameCube or Wii or something, but like what happened there was. It was attacking me twice at the same time. The first attack, it was a long wind-up animation. And what that was, it was like an instant kill attack. And if it grabbed you with its mouth, it basically just chewed you up and just killed you in one hit. And um, I was running out of the way for that attack. And then it started like to try to attack me with its tentacle. And I did it like a quick time like dodge which took some time. Like I dodged that with a quick time event and that took like a second and a half to do. And meanwhile, I'm going through this stupid animation of dodging this tentacle attack. It's main mouth tentacle thing is still like winding up, getting ready to fucking attack me. And then it just like lunges at me and it just fucking eats Leon. So yeah, basically what happened there was I got killed as I was dodging another attack. Like, if I hadn't dodged that tentacle attack, I wouldn't have died, I don't think. And, like, it was just... 
I mean, obviously that that only happens like in one that one boss fight, but I kind of felt like there were stupid like little moments like that, like kind of peppered throughout the game. It was just kind of stupid, like in the gameplay mechanics. Like I can remember another part where I was climbing up this ladder and like. Like, okay, first of all, I was at the bottom of the ladder, and I was looking up the ladder through, like, my rifle scope or something like that, and there were no enemies up there, but I could hear somebody up there. I could hear, like, the enemy, like, breathing or walking or something. I looked up. There was nothing up there, so I decided to climb up the ladder, and then, like, as I'm coming out of the animation, out of the climb off the ladder and get onto the floor animation... Like, the enemy's already winding up an attack, and, like, I come out of the animation, and I get hit in the face with, like, a mace. Like, there was literally, like, no way for me to dodge that. Like, that was kind of lame. Um, I think the solution for that would just be, like, you cannot, like, enemies shouldn't start, like, a an, an attack animation unless you like if you're if you're in a climbing animation enemies shouldn't even like know you're there you should just kind of be like invisible to them that's a very basic fucking solution to that they shouldn't be attacking you if you can't dodge it yeah um that didn't happen too often but it 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 happened you know every once in a while kind of throughout the whole game it seemed like It really wasn't too bad. Like I'm, I'm really like kind of stretching this here to like nitpick about that. But it, it really wasn't that bad. And this is a very old game. I understand. But it was something I noticed. Uh, what else? What else can I say about Resident Evil Four that will piss off its fans? Uh. Hmm. Damn, I'm I'm really kind of drawing a blank here. Like I don't really know what else I can say about this game that's negative. Uh, there's probably something there, but I'm just not picking up on. Ashley was useless. She was just kind of like a like dead weight that you just had to protect. And I guess that was really the point, you know, just to... That was just, like, added difficulty onto the game. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't really call that, like, a negative thing about the game. I mean, it was... It, it made the game harder, you know? And that's not necessarily a bad thing at all, really. Um... Oh my god, how did I overlook this? Fucking target practice. Fuck target practice. Fuck target practice. Oh my god, I hated that crap. How the hell did I overlook that? I understand that you don't have to do fucking target practice in this game. You totally don't. But they give you like such a strong incentive to do it that you just... Like, if you... like. They give you so much money for doing it that, like, you're kind of crazy not to do it. Like, unless it's going to take fucking forever to do, then it would, like, benefit you so much, like, during, like, the course of, like, the rest of your game to just fucking trudge through target practice. Honestly, like, I wouldn't have hated it so much if it weren't as difficult as it was. Um... Like, it was, uh, it was, it got extremely difficult, like, towards the end, like, the, the first, the first and the last rounds of target practice were both extremely difficult for some weird reason, um, the, the, the round A, or not round A, round B and C were not difficult at all, I don't think, I, I remember kind of breezing through those but the first and the last ones just were terrible. The first one, I think, was the worst. The last one was also pretty painful. But, yeah. Target practice is gay. I hate it. Um, it also didn't really fit in with the rest of the game. 
Which is fine, really. I mean, it, you know, the game doesn't all have to be, like, about fucking scaring the shit out of you and creating tension and stuff. Like, they can be, there can be some, like, light-hearted stuff happening. Um... So that's fine. That's not really a big deal, but it's just the difficulty on target practice was just super outrageous. Like, no. Uh, what else? What else can I bitch about about Resident Evil 4? Um, I don't know if I missed this anywhere. Like, if if this was like in some note that I just never saw or anything, but. I don't think it was ever made clear that flash grenades kill parasites in one hit. Like, is that actually anywhere? Like, is that, like, on the description of the flash grenade that I just never looked at? Or, I don't know. Like, I learned that from Resident Evil 5. And I don't even know how I learned that on Resident Evil 5. But, like, I just tried it on this game and it works. Like, I didn't know that until fucking Resident Evil 5, like, what the hell? Also, that fucking frag grenades will blow off the lock of a door with, like, one shot. I did not know that before I played through the game this time. Every other time I got to that one stupid room with the fucking cage that falls over you and, like, a fucking dude with claws jumps in with you, like, I had to shoot the shit out of that lock with my fucking machine gun as I'm getting swiped at with the claw dude and then getting attacked on the sides by dudes with maces and it was just terrible. I hated it. That was like the worst room in the universe. That was like the my most like dreaded part of Resident Evil 4 until I found out that you could just fucking blow the locks off very easily. After that part I would say is the room with the two the, the, the guys with the two or the two claw dudes who are just fi fucking chilling there the top of the stairs that was also an extremely tense part it was very fun i'm not gonna lie i had a lot of fun with that part it was it was awesome like just the rush that you got from it was it was pretty cool but very very scary and difficult other than that i didn't really feel that tension like that much not that much you know mm. Again, that's not really a negative thing. I, I can't really think of anything else other than target practice, you know, to complain about Resident Evil 4. I don't know what else to say about that. But yeah, anyway, the whole getting back to the whole reason why I played this game. Special weapon, um, special weapon upgrades. Um... I don't want to... Well, I mean, I'm not working on Arachnoid at the moment. Uh, I've kind of put it down for a while. My group and I have decided that we should work on smaller games for a while, and that's what we're going to do. Um, I'll definitely come back to that game. Like, that Arachnoid must be finished. I cannot let it be unfinished. But, yeah, I, I'm, I've got to leave it alone for a while, and I'll come back to it. Um, I was saying something else just now, and then I totally lost my train of thought. Why I am playing Resident Evil 4. Um, it was just to see, like, how the, the upgrades for the weapons are, are balanced and all that, and how, how it all works out, and Resident Evil 4 did a very good job of balancing weapon upgrades so that, you know, the game does not become too difficult or too easy. It's, it was it set a very good uh, level of difficulty by locking um, weapon upgrades until you progress, until you make more progress in the game. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I could talk about it a little bit more, but... Um, you know, it's not a sure thing that I'm going to record Dead Space after this. Not today, obviously, but you know, like in the in the very near future, it's not a sure thing that I'm going to record Dead Space. I I really want to, but it's that's a lot of time that I've got to ded dedicate to that, and I don't have a whole lot of time these days to play video games. 
but if I am going to play Dead Space, then I'll save I'll save some of what I have left to say for like the end commentary on Dead Space because um, I I'm actually I actually kind of use Dead Space and Resident Evil 4 as a template for how I want the upgrade system to work for Arachnoid. So yeah, I'll go into it more in more depth after I play through Dead Space if I play through Dead Space. Um, yeah, I, that's, that's all I've got to say. I've been recording this commentary for like, oh my god, like an hour already. I am tired. It's 3.36 a.m. Uh, I think I'm just gonna like lie down, relax, try to sleep. Um, yeah, okay, I'm like officially (laughs) out of stuff to say. Thank you, people of YouTube, of the internet, of the world, for watching this very, very long walkthrough of Resident Evil 4. If you sat through all this commentary, hey, cool. Let me know what you think. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, my, my brain is like so blank right now. I've talked so much. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Until next time, I am Wild Wolf G. Thank you once again for watching. Later, guys.